Vintage Electric Go-Kart Build Log Number 5 Yeah, it works! This is the log where we finally drive the thing. But first, some more assembly. I got the 3D printed parts for the display and control panel. The display sits behind the steering wheel and is held on with hose clamps. The display slips into the bracket from the side and is screwed into place with some end caps. I got impatient waiting for the 3D printed parts to arrive and actually picked up my own 3D printer. This is the first part I printed with it, the battery cradle. The cradle is printed in two separate pieces and is friction fit together with pins. It took a bit of wrestling to get it to come together, but the end result actually turned out pretty nice. The BMS and DC contactor mount to the back of the cradle just like they were going to mount on the battery box that I had initially planned for. I'm using the same carriage bolts to mount it to the frame as well. To help with both vibrations and slipping, I mounted some neoprene foam to the battery cradle. This should help keep the battery in place. And here is my initial idea for holding the battery down to the cradle. These are nylon straps with plastic cam type buckles which cinch down on the nylon straps when you close the buckle. For this test I haven't wired up the DC contactor which means the resistor is not in parallel with the battery yet. This means that we need to manually pre-charge the capacitors in the controller before we connect up the battery pack. I do this by first connecting up the negative lead and then the positive lead with the resistor in series to charge up the controller to around 50 volts. Then it's safe to plug in the battery pack. I think we're ready to take it for a spin. The key switch turns on the 24 volt DC-DC converter, which turns on the controller and the BMS, and we're ready to go. This thing is powerful. I've actually had to dial the power back a bit to around 40% total, but it's working quite well. The main things I notice after this first shakedown are that the brakes are not that great and the steering can be kind of twitchy and hard to steer at times. This is likely because all the weight of the cart is in the rear. To help with braking, I'm going to test next, enabling brake regen on throttle release. And we might be able to add some ballast weight to the front of the cart to help with steering. I plan to post my full drive in another video where I'll talk about all the aspects of the cart on the first drive. But overall, it's really satisfying to see this thing finally moving. So what's next? There's still a bit of electrical to do, and we're going to have the frame painted as well. Then, of course, the frame wouldn't be complete without some RGB lighting. In the next video, we'll go through a complete build of the cart. And with that, we'll wrap up this video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Take care. <laughs>